Over the next few weeks, we plan to bring you a look inside the campaigns of the three presidential candidates left standing and the people behind the scenes who have helped them get this far. Tonight, the backroom warriors at the center of Barack Obama's campaign in the heart of Chicago. First, there's the candidate. It's very different than many campaigns that I've seen. Then there's the strategist behind the candidate. And the campaign manager who leads a 24-7 political operation with one goal, winning the presidency. What is a day in the life of David Axelrod like? You know, life is a cascade of phone calls. I think it's a different place than when I went there. Emails meetings. Uh, we have a few more that uh, we're going to roll out over the next few days. It's kind of a series of rolling conversations. Rewrite that as a more generic. All day long. And between us and the candidate. You ready to rock and roll? Yeah, there we go. I'm all over. All right. Between us and the states and between uh, the staff here. Tomorrow he'll be in Muncie and then he's here in Chicago. Constant conversations that take place between Central Command in Chicago Hello. and what's known as the bubble an army of traveling press and campaign staffers who on this day were touring the next battleground state of Indiana. The whole road show out there is, is her production. And, that is and it's, tough, huh? It's the, well, it's the production of everyone. Over yeah, there. you have a whole team. <laughs> we do. Like, What's the, the most challenging part of doing this? Um, I think the most challenging part is making sure that Brock gets home to see his family. How has the press been? It's It's been great. I mean, you know, this long days and people are tired sometimes, but you got to move them around. There's a lot of logistics because we're all over the place. You know, planes, buses, meals. The speeches are crafted by a 26-year-old wordsmith and his equally youthful deputies. His voice is always in my head when I'm writing, just to make sure it, uh, it jives with what he wants to say. They said our sights were set too high. What is Ted Sorensen's influence on this campaign? Well, I mean, anybody who's a speechwriter looks up to Ted Sorensen. He's sort of the model for any speechwriter. Ask not what your country can do for you. And, Ask of course, JFK's rhetoric in terms of, you know, bringing the country together and inspiring the country is something we all look to. So you're the finance department, closer. led by this captain, has helped raise a record-breaking $233 million so far. What's the average donation? $96. $96 on the internet. On the internet, it's a little bit less than that. Yeah, Reggie, why don't we make those thank you calls? These are for the fundraisers I've helped. Yes, sir. This is our system that tracks all the our online donors. Are you astounded by the amount of money you guys are raising, both on the internet and through other means? I mean, I think the most amazing thing is we have 1.3 million donors. When we started off, we had... Juliana, how many donors did we have at the very beginning? At the very beginning, I think we had a database of 20,000. We just really need what he said about um, the press. Then there's the press operation, answering questions from reporters, trying to tamp down any controversy in constant contact with the road, while trying to make sure the message of the day survives. We do our best to return everybody's calls, but if we're not uh, calling back within the hour, you know why, we're probably buried. You look like you're about 12, pretty much like everyone <laughs> yeah. else here in this and office. I, and, I'm, and I'm the oldest one out here at 32, so. <laughs> when a meeting adjourns, it looks like classes are out on a college campus. Most of these staffers are in their 20s. What is your background? What did you do before this? Um, I worked for um, for Senator Evan Bayh, um, when he was thinking about running for president. Were you mad that Evan Bayh became a Hillary supporter? <laughs> I, I, I respected his decision. What did so this good. used to be? And many once worked with Clinton's people. Their friends turned rivals. And for campaign operatives, it's all in a day's work. I worked on Senator Clinton's campaign for the Senate in 2000. She's been very supportive uh, of uh, a cause that's close to me, which is uh, epilepsy research. And uh, my daughter has a very severe uh, epilepsy, and it's been sort of the defining struggle in our lives. So this was difficult. And, and, and I have decided not to participate in the presidential race this year. But I told everyone the one thing that would change that would be if Barack Obama decided to run for president. Because you had such a close association with the Clintons, mm -hmm. and they have been so mm -hmm. helpful, was that yes, a bit it's, uncomfortable? It's, it's always difficult when, and that's why I hate primary elections because they are sort of family fights and you end up um, having to work against people who you care about. 
Even for this seasoned strategist, there have been lessons learned along the way. I think we did too much of that kind of iconic rally type campaigning. We've spent a lot more time in diners. This is one of the top ten bankers in the country. And uh, famously bowling alleys. And for the campaign manager, there's a silver lining in a battle that's been tougher and lasted longer than anyone expected. The Clinton campaign's good, so they're putting us through our paces. We're being vetted thanks to their good work. Challenged yet again by this week's Pennsylvania primary, off they go to fight another day. Okay, let's go.